Will Otani show the Dodgers the way to a World Series? Are the Yankees on deck for a big season? Locked on MLB Season Preview Episode 1 starts right now. The Locked On Podcast Network presents the 2024 MLB Season Preview. Sponsored by FanDuel. The 2024 MLB season is upon us, and Locked On has the answers to the biggest questions for the season. Over this five-episode series, you'll hear from every local host we have covering every MLB team in a way only Locked On can provide. I'm your host, Tanitra Batiste, and in this first episode, we'll go division by division, debating which team will come out on top. And after you are done with this episode, make sure you check out the rest of Locked On's MLB season preview by subscribing to Locked On MLB. Be part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now let's start where the biggest offseason story left off. Does Shohei Otani keep the Los Angeles drivers in the driver's seat for the NL West despite the Arizona Diamondbacks World Series appearance? Welcome into our Locked On Sports 2024 MLB season preview. I'm your host, Tanitra Batiste, and joining me are Locked On Dodgers, Jeff Snyder, Locked On Padres host, Javier Reyes, Locked On Giants, Ben Kaspek, Locked On Rockies, Paul Holden, and rounding out the crew, Locked On Diamondbacks, Miller Thomas. I guys are here to talk in L West, and we're going to dive right into it because there's a lot to dig into for this division. Last year, The Dodgers finished atop the NL West. The Rockies finished at the bottom. Paul, who's in first this season at the end of the regular season and who's in last place in the division at the end? Unfortunately, the evil empire reigns supreme over the NL West. And I unfortunately will have to concede that I think the Dodgers will be at the top of the NL West at the end of the season. Now, what they do in the playoffs, that is still to be seen. It's it's a team that has to prove themselves in the playoffs, even with this big roster. We've seen it too many times with this Dodgers team where there's all this momentum, there's all the hype. And then in the big moments, they aren't able to get to the big game. They certainly have the tools to do so. They certainly spent the money to be there. They are certainly the team to watch in all of baseball. Uh, But I have the Dodgers at the top of the division there. And uh, unfortunately, uh, that leaves uh, a really tough hill to climb for my uh, beloved Colorado Rockies. Indeed, Uh, indeed. How about you, Jeff? You see your Dodgers at the top of this division at the end of this regular season? Yeah, I mostly just want to congratulate Paul on correctly pronouncing the word playoffs twice. Uh, <laughs> oh, you know, I, I didn't yeah. know if he had enough experience to do that. But uh, yeah, you know what? The, the Dodgers, uh, like you said, unfortunately, it's true. Winning the division isn't really the problem most of the time. The, the Giants did have one fluke season a couple of years ago oh, when they won on. it. But for the most part, you know, the Dodgers. Wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and how they do before and after. Anyway, uh, you know, the Dodgers, yeah, they're going to win the range. division. And uh, the, the big question is by how much and who else grabs one of those wild card spots because unfortunately what the d-back showed us last year was that you can grab a wild card spot and uh and go really really deep in the postseason yeah that's kind of where my thought was as well and it's interesting because javier i kind of look at it and i think hey and and we know all too well here in atlanta what that looks like but Ultimately speaking, you still want to win. There, there's something to be said about winning the division. There's something to be said about the potential position that can put you in. Do you think the Dodgers get it done again this year? Yeah. I mean, look, like Jeff said, that's never been the problem is the division, first of all. Uh, just to attest to that. And with everything they added this offseason, it would be actually more impressive if they didn't, I think, at this rate. I'm not even trying to be mean. I think that that would be a huge upset if they don't win the National League West this year. And the playoffs... Look, has every person, with the exception of Paul, no offense, his team beat the Dodgers in the playoffs more recently, aside from the the COVID shortened year? Yeah, you know the Diamondbacks. I'm pretty sure. I don't know when the Giants did, but no, I'm just going to assume team. never. I'm they just going to assume they only never once. has. They only <laughs> played once. Assume. They only played once. All right, fine. And then ever. the Padres beat them when it was actually fair in a full game series and all that, and their pitches were healthy. But I'm a believer in the law of averages, um, and I think that eventually. The Dodgers can't blow it. I'm not trying to be mean. I just don't think that they will. It's just, I just can't get over that. Like, I know that we have people that will go against that rule. James Harden of the NBA is a great example, right? But 
for the most part, I just think adding Otani, there's something about him with the winning experience from the World Baseball Classic. Eventually, Mookie Betts isn't going to go 0 for 45 or whatever he is in the playoffs right now mm-hmm. as of as of late. So I think that the Dodgers are going to be comfortable. Now, when they face some of the best teams in the league, maybe if they get to the World Series, that's a different story. But I just don't sense with this team, with all the momentum, with the Otani effect, I don't sense this team having a really catastrophic Padres or Diamondbacks or whoever, whatever, Angels, whatever kind of underwhelming team by comparison to them ends up beating them. So I think they've got it. You concur, Ben? Yeah, I think it's a pretty easy call. Like it, and again, like I'm going to echo what everyone else says. The division is not the problem for them, and it took the one time they didn't win the division in the last decade. It took 107 wins to hold off a 106 win Dodger team, and so they are like they are not one of those teams that just has a major disappointment of a season like the Padres did last year. We were all on here last year. Everybody but two of us, Jeff and I, picked the Padres to win the division, and they won 82 games, and the Dodgers won 100. And so, and Ben only didn't pick them because he didn't want to jinx it. He thought they were going to win it too. (laughs) I didn't. I mean, I thought it was closer than people thought because of what I'm saying, which is that they they just Andrew Friedman is really good at his job and and constructs a roster that does just doesn't. fall short of expectations in the regular season but in the postseason <laughs> only three are, teams has won a world series more recently than the dodgers that's all i'm saying i do respect Javi giving his listeners the dodgers what they want blowing it by in the making postseason. the intellectually dishonest argument that 2020 doesn't count but only three teams have won the world series more recently than the dodgers so you know look 2020 counts but like the reality is most people don't count it and so that's fine that's because most people didn't win the world series if, if every team that won, nobody if, cares though if, it's just, the reality. The series, you it's just the reality. I mean, Padres like, fans danced in the streets because they made the, the freaking playoffs in that well, that's season. Padres fans. That's Dude, Padres right. fans. Dude, my All take right. is it counts. <laughs> However, the problem is that they've had so many blowups. If this was a team that yeah. hadn't been blowing in the playoffs, I don't think so. Let's say. The Let's Guardians, say if the, the Astros had not cheated in 2017, so that was their second World Series title. Fair point. I think mm-hmm. people would be giving them more credit for it. Guardians won the World Series, a team that hasn't, you know, they've lost, but the Dodgers has been a lot more in front of your face with the teams that we mentioned before. Otherwise, I don't think it gets brought up. I think people are just like, yeah, that was really great that they won. Who cares if it was shortened? But with the Dodgers, everyone's like, yeah, okay. Of course, this is the one time you didn't blow it. Season, so, you know. That's all. But anyway, just struggling over here. I have to defend. Yeah. <laughs> so, Miller, I guess you would think the same, that it's one of those where it's kind of a foregone conclusion that it'll be the Dodgers slash who cares because it's just the division title. Yeah, I don't even know if there's really much more for me to add at this point. I mean, look, the Dodgers, they're really good at winning regular season games. That's kind of their specialty. I'm sure that they're going to do it again next season. I mean, you spend over a billion dollars in the offseason. You add MVPs and Otani, all-stars and Teoscar Hernandez. You trade for Glass now. You bring in Yamamoto. Like, they spent a lot of money this offseason after getting swept to we know who. So for the (laughs) Dodgers... I, I think they will win the division again next season. It's been their calling card. It's what they do year in and year out. Unfortunately, Paul Holden, I love you, but I think the Rockies will fi- will probably finish in last place in the NL West as well. I actually do like their lineup a lot. I like Nolan Jones. I like Tovar. I actually think they have a bunch of really interesting guys in that lineup, but the pitching, I just don't think it's there. So unfortunately, the Rockies, I think they will be frisky, but they will be in last place. Now let's head to the AL East where the Baltimore Orioles stole the show in 2023 while the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox floundered. What's in store for this division this season? Welcome into our 2024 MLB preview, and we are going to get right into it in the AL East. Got my guys joining me tonight from Locked On Blue Jays. It's Braden Nawasco, Locked On Orioles, Connor Newcomb, our host of Locked On Rays, Kevin Weiss, host of Locked On Red Sox, Gabby Hurlbut, and host of Locked On Yankees, Stacey Gatsoulias. Guys, we have so much to get into, so let's jump right in. Brayden, I'm going to kick things off with you in a very, hopefully, competitive AL list. Who lands at the top of this division in 2024? 
Yeah, so sadly, as Blue Jays fans will be not happy to hear, we think it's going to be the Yankees over here at Lockdown Blue Jays with the structure that they've built. They look really good um, to the dissatisfaction of all Blue Jays fans everywhere. We're sorry to tell you that. <laughs> I absolutely love it. And so, Brayden, since you kind of started the Petty Fest, I'm going to take it to Gabby. And Gabby, who's going to finish at the top of the AL East? Yeah, I mean, as a Red Sox fan myself, I absolutely do not like uh, that answer that the Yankees are going to win the division. I actually have the Orioles winning the division. Um, I think they fixed a lot of their problems they had um, this offseason. They primarily needed pitching. They went out and got an absolutely star pitcher to add to their rotation. They're going to have some people coming back fully healthy, presumably. Um, I just think they look really good again. I don't have a reason to believe that they'll take a step back from last year. So I still see them talent wise as at the top of the division. And Connor, you think about exactly what Gabby said, the Orioles went out and really kind of beefed up their pitching staff, but did they beef up the staff enough to land themselves at the top of the division? I think Corbin Burns helps you go and get one of the five best pitchers in baseball. Now it was addition by subtraction. Kyle Bradish might be getting Tommy John surgery might be out for the year. He was their ace last year, but I think I've picked the Rays to win this division pretty much every single year we've done this, and it's been crazy every year to pick the Orioles, but they are the defending champions, so I might as well just go with the Orioles, and I think with Corbin Burns, some of that move was maybe more of winning the playoffs than winning the regular season, which they failed to do last year, but why not? Let's run it back. Hey, Kevin, there's another Kevin out there who would love to have the Rays do nothing but land atop the AL East, but will they do it? I, I guess um, myself and Connor were scratching each other's backs because I have the Orioles winning the division Whoa, okay. uh, this year. I still think the Rays will make the playoffs, but uh, the the young core of the Orioles, I just think they're going to continue to grow and thrive. And uh, Corbin Burns is you know one of the big stories of the offseason. So that gives uh, us in Tampa Bay a little bit of um, scary vibes going into the season. Indeed. And Stacy, no pinstripe love except one way. So I'm going to let you get giant chime in and let us know if you think maybe the Yankees will surprise everyone in this division and land on top. I'm picking the Orioles. I've been saying it all off season. I'm picking Fair the enough. Orioles too. They may take a step back, but maybe by three games, you know, I really feel like the Orioles are going to be very good again. And like everyone was saying, the addition of Corbin Burns is a big one. Indeed, indeed. And we'll talk a little bit about the over under and where we think all of our teams are going to land a little bit later. So definitely stick around and it'll be compelling because we didn't have any unanimity on who's going to land atop the division. So if you want to know more about what our hosts think as we approach the Memorial Day, uh, the Memorial Day timeline, rather, as well as the trade deadline and throughout the season, be sure to check them out on your favorite Locked on MLB show, your team every day. Coming up, despite all the money and all the headlines, the New York Mets haven't been able to keep up with the Atlanta Braves. Will this year be any different? The NL East preview is next. Get ready to say farewell to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's $200. 100 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. And while you're locking in your college hoops picks, check out the MLB odds. It's not a surprise that the Dodgers have the best odds to win it all at plus 320. The Atlanta Braves aren't far behind at plus 450, followed by the Houston Astros at plus 700. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. The NL East has been dominated by the Atlanta Braves despite all this money and all these headlines coming from the New York Mets. Will this year be any different? Welcome into our 2024 MLB season preview. I am your host, Tanitra Batiste, and it is time to talk NL East. Here with me is host of Locked On Phillies, Connor Thomas, host of Locked On Mets, Ryan Finkelstein, filling in for Jake Mastriani for Locked On Braves, Lindsey Crosby, host for Locked On Marlins, Peter Pratt, and host of Locked On Nationals, Ryan 
Clary. Guys, we got a lot to get into in a very hot division. So I just want to make sure that we have enough time to, for each and every one of you guys to speak. I'm going to come right out of the gates because this team didn't necessarily win the division last year, but certainly they won big in terms of what they were able to do in the postseason. So, Connor, I'm coming to you first. Sounds Watch good. At least Connor Thomas, put it on the table. Who's winning this division? It's going to be the Atlanta Braves again, and it's not going to matter. <laughs> That's just how this works in the NL That's East fire, in the past couple of years. Like, honestly, uh, I don't know why the Phillies would want to try and compete for the division because they have the playoff formula set when it comes to getting into October. But I'll tell you this, the Phillies are going to make this as competitive, I think, as the Mets did a couple years ago when you had a couple hundred win teams in the division. Not that the Phillies are going to win 100 games, but I think Atlanta is going to have a run for their money for the division, unlike last year. Indeed, indeed. And Lindsay, it's interesting that Connor says that because I think when we looked across our entire group, our entire panel, both Ryan's and Peter, everyone's like in agreement. Yeah, Braves are probably yeah. going to win the division. Is that how you see it as well, that the Braves will win it, but the Phillies will make it competitive? That's kind of the consensus around baseball in general, is that Atlanta is going to win the division, but... For Atlanta, it's not really about the division. It's about doing something in October. They now have two straight years of going one and three against Philadelphia and being knocked out in the NLDS. And to their credit, the team is talking about, it's all about making the World Series. Our goal is to make the World Series, not to win the division, not to make it to the postseason. Our goal is to be in the World Series in 2024. Indeed, this is one of the first times and, you know, we always talk about for the culture down here in Atlanta, right? And when you think about spring training, that's what it's been from the comment that AJ Mentor made about the fact that it is World Series or bust and every player pretty much old veterans, so to speak, on this team, like an Austin Riley or even the new guy like a Chris Sale, all kind of coming together to say, hey, yeah, we back that up and that it is World Series or bust. And I got to admit, it's kind of one of those situations where for them, you don't want to go back to that super team where you had 13, 14 division titles and you got exactly one ring out of it. I think those guys are well aware of that and they don't want to repeat history. Now you think about the biggest offseason storylines and you kind of think about some of the big moves that were made in the NL East and, and Ryan F, I'm going to go Finkelstein. We're going with you first. And then I want Clary to kind of, Clary to chime in as well. But when you look at some of the moves that the Mets made, what are some of the biggest storylines uh, coming out of Mets camp, but also from your perspective, biggest storylines for the NL East? Well, I think for the Mets, it's about being a sustainable winner. That's what they're talking about. And that's why all the moves they made this offseason were one year deals, basically. They're looking at a longer window. So they're going to try to compete this year. They're not going to be competing with the Braves atop this division. They're going to try to get one of those wild card spots. But for them, it's about long-term winning. That's why David Stearns was just hired to be the president. It's all about the prospects this year, seeing what they have in the system and seeing those guys that were debuted last year and Brett Beatty, Mark Vientos, Francisco Alvarez, get another year under their belt, see if they can establish themselves as you know starting big league players and hopefully be a, a team that in the future – could compete with the Braves to top this division. And Ryan, you think about the Mets as a team that did everything that they could to put themselves in position to win the division and make a run in the postseason. And you want to talk about disappointments. They had their fair share of disappointments last season as well. What do you kind of see from them as far as win total or as far as what's going to be the make or break for this Mets team in order for them to have success this upcoming season? I think they're about a 500 team that could go a little bit in either direction, right? I mean, we saw the Marlins last year sneak in. Uh, we've seen the Diamondbacks last year go to the World Series that they're sneaking in. So I think they set themselves up to be about a 500 team. And if a couple things go their way, maybe they win 85 games and sneak in. I don't think they're going to be a 90-win team. That'd be, I guess, kind of the ceiling I would put out there is getting to 90 wins if everything broke right. But mostly I, I think it's it's a 500 ball club that could overperform expectations a little bit. And Peter, how do you see that? Speaking of the Marlins, how do you see things going for the Marlins? What are your expectations for them? The biggest storylines coming out of Miami? Yeah, listen, they made the postseason last season. And what's happened? You've had a full-blown uh, front office rebuild. Kim Ang out, Peter Bendix in. Like, that is the biggest storyline here. The Marlins have had a full-blown rebuild on the infrastructure around the team. They haven't done anything, pretty much, with the big league roster. So Tim Anderson just joining. So it's been a slow and surprising offseason, I would say, for the Marlins. We were expecting to kind of build off the, I guess, the momentum. And 
but really you have to look at it and think Peter Bendix, we're going to be interested to see what he can do. Like they're trying to copy the Rays model. I think that, that model suits uh, South Florida, let's say. So yeah, I, I think from a Marlins perspective, they're, they're looking to play 500 ball. And if they're in it at the deadline, see if they can make some moves. I think this division is tough as we know, just to go back to the Braves, by the way, the, the Braves for me, you know, yes, they're the class right now on, on paper headed into this one, but, it's all about health for the Bravos. They love to roll out their big guys game after game after game after game. And for me, if you get a couple of key injuries, then that completely changes it for the Braves. I'm not sure as they're, they're as deep as they are quality at the top. So I think that is the main difference maker for the Bravos. Can they stay healthy? It's the same for everyone. But for me, the Bravos, they've got a lot of talent at the top. And I think it gets a bit thin pretty quickly. The AL West have been run by America's least favorite team in the Houston Astros. But in 2023, the Texas Rangers only lost by tiebreakers and then went on to win the World Series. So who has the edge this season? Welcome into our 2024 MLB preview. We are going out West, AL West to be exact. And we have tonight with us Eric Heisman, Locked On Astros host, Ty Dane Gonzalez, Locked On Mariners host, John Frisch from Locked On Angels, and Bryce Patterick from Locked On Rangers. Guys, there's a lot to talk about because this is one of the most competitive divisions in all of baseball. So I'm going to start because we actually have coined him Bryce Patterick as in petty because he wanted to remind us that his team is the reigning champions across all of major league baseball. But my question is to you this year is this price reigning world series champions, but not necessarily reigning AL West champions. Do you guys get it done and win the division this year? Well, I want to congratulate the Astros uh, for winning the AL West. The most important thing to happen last year uh, definitely did them a lot of good. Um, but I think the AL West crown is coming back up north to Arlington to the Texas Rangers. I think they are just a much better, more well-rounded team this year. Last year, the bullpen was uh, a travesty during the regular season. But the offense is just getting better. It was the best offense in the American League last year, and all they're doing is adding a full season of rookies Evan Carter and hopefully a full season of young rookie Wyatt Langford, who is one of the top-hitting prospects in all of Major League Baseball. He's been on fire in the Cactus League. The guy is a hitting prodigy. Going to make this offense even better. So I think the pitching staff, while it does have some question marks, I think it will get healthy in the right time. And even if this team doesn't win the AL West, it doesn't particularly matter to this Texas Rangers squad. All right. So to, I'll go ahead and counter you. Uh, I'll go ahead and raise you uh, Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer being out for most of the season. And th those are some big losses for the Texas Rangers. And yes, uh, winning the division actually hurt the Astros because they did not have home field advantage and that was beneficial to you. But these Astros are a different team and they have a different manager. And I think you're going to see a whole bunch of different decisions being made this year. And a lot of it depends on the health of Justin Verlander, but uh, we saw him get off to a, a late start last year, but uh, that I don't think that's to be a bad thing. That means he'll be ready and fresh for October. So I think that the Astros are set to, with a Yiner Diaz as, as a catcher and all the offense uh, ready to explode. I think that they're probably going to win the division this year. And shots fired early. I love it, Eric. I appreciate it as our locked on Astros host, but you know, it's an it, interesting and still a compelling division to the point where I feel like we're going to be having some interest, some compelling conversation throughout the season. So I throw it to you, Ty, and say, Hey, what about your Mariners? What are they going to do? Where did they land and who wins the division? Yeah, I think this front office has done a, a lot of really good things this offseason in spite of their owner completely hamstringing them and uh, lowering payroll and forcing them to make some very difficult decisions. And I, I'm not really sure how Jerry DePoto and Justin Hollander could have maneuvered this situation any better than they did. That said, while I am pretty high on the Mariners' chances to win the division, uh, more so than a lot of people just within the fan base in general. Uh, I'm going to go with the Astros. Um, I think the Mariners have the best pitching staff in the division. I think the Rangers have the best offense in the division, but I think the Astros have the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. and I think they have more probability. Uh, and I've just learned over the last few years, don't bet against the Astros. Simple as that. And that's fair enough. Now, John, the Angels kind of right there in the middle. Any opportunity for them to shock the world and win the division? Or are we kind of saying, hey, it's a one-two punch between these Astros and these Rangers and where you land? Yeah, when it comes to the Angels this year, our motto has been no expectations. Just go into the season and hope for the best. 
Uh, they've got a really young staff, which will be exciting for Halo fans. But as far as winning the division, that is certainly out of reach. If I had to take a guess at who's going to get it this year, I think I'm going to go Rangers. I think the Astros are getting older. I think the Rangers, like Bryce said, they get a full season of some of their young studs that are coming up. And we got to see them a little bit last season. But, uh, you know, it came down to the wire there at the end and between the Rangers and the Astros. I think the Rangers have a real chance of really going somewhere with the young guys that are just studs at the end of the day. Yeah, that's a fair call. Like you said, literally landing at 90 and 72 on the season for both of those squads last season. So again, it'll be interesting. And if you guys want to follow these guys and kind of watch the drama that could develop across the season for the AL West, make sure you check out your favorite Locked on MLB show, your team every single day. Coming up, two divisions that could see some major shakeups this season with the NL and AL Central. Who comes out on top? Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. This includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channel lets you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, traveling, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash LockedOnFireTV. The NL Central saw the Milwaukee Brewers on top in 2023, but will the Chicago Cubs or Cincinnati Reds have anything to say about that this season? Welcome in to our 2024 MLB preview for the NL Central. Joining me tonight are Ethan Smith, the Locked On Pirates, J.D. Haffron from our Locked On Cardinals podcast, Stephen Offenbaker, Locked On Reds, Chuck Freeman, Locked On Brewers, and wrapping it up would be Sam Ober, our guy from Locked On Cubs. We got a lot to dig into, so let's get it going. I'm going to start with you, Ian. Tell me, who will win this NLC Central Division for 2024? Before Cody Bellinger signed, it was a very tough decision. And even after, I think it's a very tough decision. But I do think, and it pains me a little bit to say it as a Pirates fan, but right now I do think the Cubs are the front runner with what they've done in the offseason and what other teams may have not done this offseason and what's a very winnable division in the NL Central. And it's interesting that you would say that because then, of course, I have to ask Sam, do you agree that your team potentially – can and will win this division? Yeah, I think, you know, I think it's going to be really close. I think it's going to be a, a three horse race between the Cubs, Cardinals, and Reds. And to me, you know, I believe the difference is going to be Craig Council. I think that's the biggest acquisition. And I think he's going to push the Cubs uh, over the top. And I think it's going to be really close, but I would, I'd lean Cubs. And you talk about that three horse race. It's so interesting, Sam, because so many of the races are going to be tight in several of the divisions. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how it plays out in the NL Central as well. What do you say, JD? How does this race play out in the NL Central this season? It's hard to argue with what Ethan and Sam both said. Uh, you know, my heart says the Cardinals have done enough, but at the same time, we thought we did enough last year and they fell on their faces and ended up in last place. So it's hard to trust Anything that the Cardinals have done this offseason, uh, I'm, I'm excited about Sonny Gray coming. But uh, at the same time, I, I don't know if Lance Lynn and Kyle Gibson were the answers when there's better pitchers out there. So, uh, But it's hard to disagree with uh, what they said there, where those are the the top three guys. And I think it'll a lot of it will depend on who's healthiest throughout the season. Yeah, health is so important. It's so important. It's you know one of those variables, Chuck, that you don't know until you get into the season. And then you talk about getting into the season. And as those injuries pile up or as they happen, you hope they don't pile up, but you never know. And then it becomes 
who's wheeling and dealing the right way at the tread deadline should injuries start to have an impact to see you get through on the other side. Who do you call this division for this season? It's always tough to count out the St. Louis Cardinals. To what happened last year with them was stunning, and I always thought they were going to make a recovery. They made a, a couple of teases along the way, but it didn't happen. Never want to count out the, uh, the Cardinals, but I like the Reds. The Reds got a good young core. De La Cruz is a rising star. I think they've improved their pitching staff. Getting Candelario was a big pickup for them. I just like what the Reds got going. They finished above the 500 mark at 82 and 80. And I really see them unseating the Brewers as division champs. They contended. They were around. They hung around a little bit. Again, they finished over the 500 mark. But I see the Reds finishing the job this year and getting getting that NL Central division title. Uh, Steven, De La Cruz is so much fun to watch. But do you feel like the Reds have done enough to put themselves in position to take this division this time? Oh, I'm excited to get to go last on this question. First of all, Chuck, that's your best content ever. Uh, I'm going <laughs> to clip that and use that along the way. I, I, listen, I want to tell you, the Reds won 82 ball games last year, and they have gotten better. Uh, and you look around the rest of this division, uh, I think the Cubs are their stiffest competition, but the Cubs, they really haven't gotten all that much better. They swapped out Stroman for Yamanata. They brought back Bellinger, and they're, they're basically the same team that they were last year with some youth that is either going to pan out or it's not. We just don't know. Uh, with the Cardinals, they signed a lot of names. And listen, I love Sonny Gray. He was great in Cincinnati. But they signed a lot of names that the everyday casual fan will be like, hey, I know that guy. All right. But the, the sad truth is all of the guys that the Cardinals signed are in the decline phase of their careers. Uh, basically, you know, I hear there's rumors out of St. Louis that every game is going to start at 1 p.m. So the team bus can hit the early bird special on the way back to the hotel. I mean, this is a group of aged players that I don't think have enough to go from last place in the division to first place in the division. Uh, when you talk about the Milwaukee Brewers, you know, Chuck has an exciting team to cover up there. But they showed inklings of an idea of being willing to blow it up and rebuild. Uh, we saw some trades in the offseason already. Then we saw some signings that don't necessarily make sense unless they're planning for a year out. Uh, I could see the Brewers continuing to blow it up between now and the All-Star break and really just go all in on a rebuild, trade guys away. You look at the Pittsburgh Pirates, they're scrappy youngsters. That's their narrative always. Um, they'll be good in April. They'll be the World Series of April champion again probably, uh, but they're not going to be able to have enough to stick around. So at the end of all that, the Reds have a solid core back, they upgraded their starting pitching. They upgraded their bullpen. Where were the weaknesses last year? Uh, and they're poised to make a run to win not only the National League Central, to be a strong playoff contender in 2024. So, Sam... You wanted to have a little something to say. Like, do you beg to differ with what we've heard so far about well, who's going to win? Well, no, I just wanted to make the point because, you know, Steven and, and his co-host Jeff and I had a, had a crossover last year where we kind of talked about this. And I just wanted to make the point where Steven's right. The, the, the Cubs pretty much did bring the same team back, except for one key difference, the manager position. And I just feel that that David Ross uh, up to Craig Council, maybe Chuck, you know, could speak better to this covering the Brewers. I just think Craig Council is, is a difference maker. He wins on the margins. I know he hasn't had the playoff success. I'm sure that Milwaukee fans would like, but this is a guy that wins on the margins. And that's really where the Cubs struggled last year. So I think if they could have the same success and the same uh, uh, production, I think council will take that 83 wins and make it 87, 88. And maybe that's enough. But like I said, I think it's going to be very close. Yeah, and Chuck, you're getting some some love there for the Brewers. Do you tend to agree with Sam's assessment? And I think you make a great point about managers and how sometimes that can certainly turn the tide for teams. You know, it was stunning how Craig Council never won manager of the year with the Milwaukee Brewers when he yep. always got the most out of his talent. Right. Now, it'll be odd if he goes to Chicago, wins the division, and is named manager of the year with more talent than he had in Milwaukee. Because in Milwaukee, this past year, they won you know 90 some odd games. How are they? How did they ever win the division? with as bad as the offense was. You had nobody in that team who could really hit their weight, and yet they won the NL Central. But he's right. Uh, Council's worth a few wins, five, six, seven. He's going to have a great clubhouse nonetheless. At least that's what he had in Milwaukee. Who, who knows when he goes 90 miles to south, but I expect it to be the same kind of culture down there. We shall be watching. And you guys, don't forget to check out and watch for more around the NL Central 
Locked on MLB shows. These guys are absolutely with it for their teams. And of course, each and every one of these teams is also your team every day. The AL Central saw the Minnesota Twins land atop the division in 2023. Will they stay the course or will the Detroit Tigers apply pressure this season? Welcome into our 2024 MLB preview. We're going AL Central and we'll be talking with Locked on Twins, Brandon Warren, Locked on Tigers, Scott Bentley, Locked on Guardians, Justin Latta, and Locked on Royals, Jack Johnson. Now, guys, it's going to be absolutely positively just fun. Nothing but fun. Nothing but storylines and good deals and winnings and losings. And let's start with the winning part of what's going to go on in the AL Central, at least what we believe it to be in 2024. Brandon, I'm going to start with you. So this AL Central division could be as competitive as any other division within Major League Baseball. But what do you see as that team that's going to be head up and shoulders above the rest in 2024? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of teeing up that I – I think the consensus is the twins are in the kind of the catbird seat to win the division, win it for the second year in a row. And really it just comes down to depth. I think they have a pretty solid starting rotation depth wise. Their bullpen is tremendous. And then on offense, they have you know, uh, enough guys in both the starting and bench roles to really just be a consistent effort all season long. Last year, they had a lot of things go wrong. Their top three players, Carlos Correa had a tough year, Byron Buxton had a tough year, and Royce Lewis only played for half the year coming off an ACL. So they're feeling pretty good about the vibes right now, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can keep those guys healthy because that's key and paramount to if they're going to repeat what they did last season. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, it's always so difficult to kind of project out so early because you never know what the twists and turns are going to be in the season. And then you, in addition to, like you said, you're talking about injuries, but you're talking about trade deadline shifts and moves, not just by the twins, but others who are in that particular division. So that might inform a lot of what happens. And like you said, 2023, it was the twins, but in 2024, could be a little bit different, Scott. Could be your Tigers that kind of bring up the rear. It just depends with them finishing uh, second in the division in 2023. Where do you see it falling in 2024? Who's going to be at the top? Yeah, you know, I, I really wish I could come on here and be like hot take guy, but I, I think that the Twins are probably in the driver's seat again. Uh, I do think that this division is much more up for grabs maybe than the general public sees like I, the guardians are always kind of on my radar and a team that I think any given year they could, you know, kind of get over the hump and, and take over the division as we've seen before the twins. Like I said, I, I think deserve to be the favorite and, and probably are the favorite. And, and obviously the tigers are kind of a young up and coming team that had an, had a pretty active off season when compared to the rest of this division for sure. So I, I do think that it's a little bit uh, a little um, bit more up for the taking maybe than, uh, like I said, than the general public uh, is maybe viewing it as. But I do think that, you know, if I had to pick a, a clubhouse favorite, no pun intended right now, it would probably still be the Twins. Just uh, a lot of depth and, and could, you know, as Brandon said, get some get some bounce back performances from some big players. Did lose some players in, in the offseason as well, which is why I think it's maybe a little close. But uh, I do think that they, at the end of the day, uh, just have the the proven track record and kind of the the floor, I guess. The ceiling is where every team is kind of the big question marks are, but the floor, I think, for the Twins is uh, is really high up there. Same with the Guardians, I guess, to be honest. Yeah, and when yeah. you think about that, Justin, the Tigers and Guardians so close in terms of where they landed at the end of the season, uh, 78 wins for the Tigers, 76 wins for the Guardians. How do you see it playing out in the AL Central? Do the Guardians maybe make that leap? and get to the top of the division, or is it the Twins? The good news for the Guardians is that this is a division full of mediocrity, so 84 wins could could win the division. <laughs> and they have maybe the highest uh, ceiling in terms of the pitching rotation. They've got five really good starters, but the question is, Shane Bieber missed most of the last year. Tristan McKenzie made two starts last year, and you've got three sophomore starters mm -hmm. who were all very good last year and all have a lot of upside, but you never know how those pitchers are going to do in year two, and, and there's no telling – Right now, if Bieber and McKenzie will be healthy in a perfect world, you know, that's a that's a great rotation. If all those guys hit their ceilings, then it's the best rotation in the division. It might be one of the better in baseball, uh, but they're not blessed with the balance that the Twins have. They don't have the depth. Uh, the Tigers might have a better a better lineup. 
But there are some emerging young prospects. I mean, Kyle Manzardo might take over first base for Cleveland at some point this year. They'll get a full season of Bo Naylor, a catcher who will be their best offensive catcher in maybe a decade, which has been a long time since they've had a catcher that didn't bat ninth. Josh Naylor is here for a full year. Jose Ramirez is still here. There's some question marks on offense, but, you know, there's a lot of ceiling if they can introduce some of the younger hitters, get a good full season out of them. The bullpen will be a question. It was kind of a disaster a year ago. A lot of one-run games. If they can avoid playing one-run games this year, they'll be a lot better for it. Mm -hmm. But uh, as, as we saw last year with the offense, there's no guarantees of that. Yeah, yeah. And then you kind of get to the bottom where the White Sox and Royals kind of found themselves last year, Jack. But you just kind of never know what might happen. Stranger things have happened for, for teams going from worst to first. But in this case, AL Central, who do you think wins the division in 2024? Yeah, it's hard to go against Minnesota here. I mean, I think they've got an elite bullpen. They've got such an elite rotation. I mean, when you have a guy like Pablo Lopez up front, I mean, that's a Cy Young candidate right there. It's hard to go against a team with such good pitching. And offensively, they're no real slouch either. I mean, I know here in Kansas City, there's a lot of people that are optimistic, but mainly because there hasn't been much to be excited about over the last you know five to six, seven years, ever since they won the World Series. And they finally got active in free agency. They tried to revamp that bullpen a little bit. You feel good about oh, top three in your rotation with Michael Walker, Seth Lugo, Cole Reagans, of course. And then after that, you know, you're hoping for a lot of bounce back guys. I mean, Bobby Wood Jr., of course, is going to be the star of this team. You feel good about Vinny Pasquantino. But then it's, you know, where else are you can hit the production from offensively? You look to Michael Garcia, MJ Melendez, Michael Massey can bounce back. If Salvador Perez can stay healthy. You know, I think for Royals fans, what they all want here is to have competitive baseball all summer long. I mean, I think that's at the top of the list right now. But when you're looking at a division champ here, even with the Central being weaker, it's hard to go against the reigning champs here in Minnesota. I just love their pitching staff. And and right behind them, I mean, it could be a Detroit or a Cleveland there. But I think I have Kansas City improving for sure, but it's still a ways to go. Indeed. And, you know, we're talking about those improvements and we're talking about where – Everything may fall out with the AL Central, but ultimately speaking, we might be having a different conversation around Memorial Day, might be having a different conversation around the trade deadline, and then ultimately a different conversation towards the end of the season. So you got to keep up with the AL Central if you want the best in what they are able to offer. Check out your favorite Locked on MLB show your team every day. Now that we've heard predictions for every MLB division for 2024, check out the rest of Locked On's MLB season previews, including over-under win totals for every team, the biggest off-season storylines, and who are the MVP candidates? Don't miss an episode by subscribing to Locked On MLB, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.